said, today we have Tim Hagen. We're going to talk about selling in the new age of a crisis uh, and, and you know, how do you adopt to, to the new ways. Um, we're going to talk a bit more about practical stuff uh, because not only that Tim is a great theorist, but he also puts these tools into practice. So uh, personally, I find Tim to be a very tech savvy person as well. So he's going to be sharing a ton of uh, new tools and materials with you today. Um, you know, some of the things that you'll hear about is, you know, how to create a residual marketing message and where to, you know, where to send them, you know, why sales is moving towards strategists and talk leaders. Um, I personally believe that, you know, a modern sale, um, you know, is, 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 it was always about a customer, but, uh, more and more customers have a lot of information, even with us, you know, auto close people come to, to us, they know all the pros and cons, they know all the competitors, they understand the space. Now what they're trying to get is how are we going to contribute to their business? How are we going to create value? What's the difference, right? And so, so I think it really comes down to, to, you know, you as a talk leader, you as a brand, even if you're representing yourself, your personal business, or you're working for a company, it always comes down to, to a brand. So, so Tim's gonna talk about how to develop a personal sales brand and so on and so forth. Um, and Tim, if you, if you allow me, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to say, you know, a few words about you. Uh, you know, Tim's, Tim's a nationally known expert in the field of workspace coaching, helping organizations develop coaching strategies that kind of facilitate incre increased workspace engagement, which is what I was talking about when I find so, you know, kind of valuable about Tim. Um, you know, talent development, we talked about millennials and how, you know, how do you work with millennials and how do you work with any generation um, without labeling, but actually, um, understanding uh, with, with a little bit of a space. Um, and, and then, you know, how do you retain talent? So Tim's gonna talk a bit more about that, but uh, Tim's also like a certified emotional intelligence practitioner. Um, and then he's leading progress coaching, which is, which is his own uh, training system that, that he is successfully applying to, to different businesses, organizations, and teams. So Tim, without further ado, uh, I'd love to, to, to hear you. Uh, and then and, and, and go over your training, which I think is going to be super, super valuable. Cool. Well, hi, everybody. Um, one of the things that Vetted just brought up, and I'm going to open up a slide deck here in a, in a second. And the thing that's going to be unique about today is that when we're talking about selling in the new age during the crisis, as Ved just mentioned to you, what we do is we teach coaching in the corporate workspace. OK, so we're going to push that aside. I don't have a product to sell you. I don't have a service to sell you. This is really about best practices. And as I've gotten to know AutoClose uh, between Ved, Sean, and myself, we've been exchanging emails and thoughts and ideas and strategies, really probably going on about three years. So we decided to put this webcast together. So I'm sure all of you have been in the webcast where the guest speaker starts bringing up products in the first two minutes. That's not going to happen. So you should give me a quick hooray right away in the chat or I log off, I'm kidding. But today is really gonna be about showing you a system of what we do and what's helped us. Let me make a very hopefully thoughtful and humble comment. Business for us is very, very good. Now, why is business good for us? It's because of some of the things that we put into place before the crisis. So when Sean had reached out to me in, in VED and the company and said, so how are you guys doing as a company? We're small, we're only about seven or eight people. We're actually doing really, really well, here's why. It's going to be some of the best practices I'm going to share with you. So if everybody could give me a thumbs up with a yes or a why, and we shall get started. Everybody put that in the chat real quick, just so I know that you're listening and that you're going to participate. Awesome. Thanks, Hi. Megan. Cool. So I'm going to turn on my screen, and I want to share with you very quickly. I'm going to be sharing a lot of different things with you, so please bear with me. Sorry about that. And so I go back to the new age of selling, and we're gonna talk about residual marketing. We're gonna talk about some different things that you can do, why sales is changing rapidly. I wanna make this very clear. Sales is changing rapidly. We do not employ a salesperson. Sales to a lot of industries are moving towards strategists and thought leaders. There is inherently, inherently a huge opportunity there. How to develop your personal sales brand personalize your marketing with video. Please do not underestimate the power of video. We actually use four different video tools. Now, one of the tools embedded in AutoClose is something called Vidyard. We put it in all of our email marketing campaigns. Why the virtual world is a good thing. If you're a sales leader, 
The virtual world is a fantastic thing for you. And last, I think the biggest mistake every salesperson makes. So I'm not gonna get into me. We already did the introduction. It was kind of that to do that. So our residual marketing message is very simple. Now what I'm gonna do everybody, I'm gonna jump in and out of the PowerPoint deck and then I'm actually gonna show you tools that we use. So the first tool that we use is auto close. So when we're running campaigns, our goal at our company is we always wanna get people to a webcast. Now that for you might be a white paper, it might be schedule a call with me, that middle part, that webcast is your call to action, okay? It can be wherever you're going to demonstrate thought leadership and expertise. And I'm gonna give you a great case study of a company here in a bit that actually sells to the restaurant industry. Think about that. And they're actually hitting their numbers. So let's go back to the first one, the message. What differentiates you? How are you communicating it? How are you personalizing it? So we use three strategies. The first strategy, which I'm gonna show you here in a bit, is auto close. Now, I was not asked to bring up auto close. I was invited and was told I could present anything I wanted. But while I'm talking to you right now, I have a campaign of about, I think it's about 20 to 30,000 records, emails going out on a cadence of my choosing with video to a targeted element. They have a built-in database feature that allows you to target. Now my target market is HR managers, training managers, and chief learning officers. Number two, I use an artificial intelligence tool called Octopus. I'm gonna demonstrate that here in a second as well. The third thing I do is I send out two to three bomb bomb video email messages. And I do some really creative things with that. Not only do I send them via email, I also send them in LinkedIn. My whole goal is to get people to, at least for us, to get people to a webcast where we demonstrate our expertise. The day of cold calling, getting people on the phone and having them take an appointment is dramatically changed even from three, four years ago. Our ability to follow up, we are so self-serving. People are learning about our companies before we even think about prospecting them because of the internet. So you have to have a calendar. We use Calendly. We'll even present a challenge to people, meaning schedule time, give us 30 minutes. Let's show you how good we are. So we do something called a coaching challenge. People can present their situation. We have 30 minutes right then and there to show them how good we are. Now that may not be apropos for your business, but think about what's your messaging systems? How do you get that running residually so it doesn't take you a lot of time? Where are you gonna get them so you can hear and see your expertise? And then number three, how are you gonna follow up? I no longer make follow-up phone calls. I give a link to my calendar. Here's our opportunity. If you wanna chat about it for 15 to 20 minutes, that's the only way I prospect. I don't say this in a arrogant way, but business is really good. Not because of the crisis, but because of the tools and the process that we put in to play uh, before the crisis. So let me show you just very quickly and I'm gonna jump around here a little bit, everybody, and I hope you don't mind. But what I'm showing you, I'm gonna log in, I got logged out. Um, so we use auto close. And so what we're doing with auto close, and I'm showing you a campaign that we're running right now. And so the coaching starter is an assessment tool that we teach, and it's a, I'm not gonna get into that, but it's a very specific tool that we use. And so we created a campaign of about 9,500, 1,390 been sent, 121 have been opened, 17 replied. And so let me just show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna edit the campaign. And so essentially what I'm doing is I'm showing my email campaigns and I'm actually pausing the campaign live here. And so I'm sending out, this is how auto close works. But see everybody, once you set this up, I'm contacting 10,000 people without thinking. And what I'm doing is I'm sending out a series of emails. This comes two days after, two days after, and then two days after. So I'm having a cadence and sometimes I spread it out more or less. And so what I can do here is I can also put in images, 
And here's where you can add video. You can put in a, what they use as Vidyard. It's embedded right in the email tool called AutoClose. So when I'm running my business, let me come back up here. I can have a number of campaigns. Now I just paused one, but this is one that started today. Um, right after this webcast, I'm going to be uh, teaching a workshop called Journal-Based Coaching. We did roughly about eight to $10,000 of sales. I didn't do one phone call. The baseline of that is I targeted using AutoClose's built-in database feature. There is not a tool out there doing what they're doing. And so I can target areas, I can target demographics, size of companies, titles. So if you notice here, I ran a campaign of 80, about 8,000 people, uh, about 10,000 emails were sent, 834 were, were opened. These are even low numbers, so I'm doing some things wrong, but 198 were uh, replied to, and that's how we got our customers. Now, did we have a few people schedule time with us to ask about, our, about the workshop? Sure, but I didn't have to make one phone call. So this is fundamentally, when we're starting a campaign with AutoClose, as you can see, I religiously use this tool. I run multiple campaigns, and you can see some I have built out here, human resources, non-Wisconsin Midwest companies, uh, no Illinois, a human resource manager, Wisconsin plus employee coaching. So I'm always running targeted campaigns that really mirror or map to our products or services. So hearing that and seeing that, and I see a couple chat messages, let me know, does that make sense to all of you? So essentially, when I set up this campaign, you're going to spend about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. But everybody, you are contacting 10, 20, 30,000 people on a religious, content, continuous, residual basis to your target demographic with a message that is specific to you. You can embed video, you can embed images, you can get people to your webcast. This is the first foundational layer of what we do. Give me a Y or an N, does that make sense to all of you? And I always have a rule, if you don't reply, we just log you off the webinar now that I have the controls. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so how many of you, <laughs> so how many of you by a, a full word, yes or no, is this the first time you've seen auto close? Give me a yes or no. Okay, for those of you who are putting no, I am not an affiliate, I don't get a commission. Um, I'm not asking for one, I wouldn't take it because I don't accept referral fees. Here's why I share that with you. When you're running your campaign, if I wanna start a campaign, everybody, and let's just say I call this bed, I'm gonna start it on a certain date. I'm gonna start this July 14th, and I'm gonna have it run Saturdays and Sundays, which I would include all of, encourage all of you to do for one reason. People will open their emails in the weekends when they're catching up. But when you click on the data unlimited, I'm setting up a campaign and let's say I wanna target Milwaukee where I am near. And let's say I want to find training managers by that title. So when I'm looking that up, I can look up a number of employees. And so you can see the matches that are up here. That's how you build a campaign, everybody. So the thing that is so cool is when I run my campaigns, when I'm running these campaigns, let me just um, stop the share here just for a second. You know, when I'm doing that, the thing that is so cool is once you're setting up that campaign, you target it out about 90 to 120 days, you target the area you want. They have a built-in database feature. They are always updating and cleaning their database. We are literally running our company off of that as the primary form of our residual marketing. I haven't even shown you what we do with LinkedIn. When I set that up, I set it up quarterly. It takes me about two, maybe two to three hours. Once I do that, my full-blown mass marketing, but targeted with unique messaging is sent out. That's the first level. That's what we do every single quarter. It takes me about two to three hours. So very quickly, you've seen it. I, I gave you a very brief demo of, of AutoClose. Give me a one-word impression of what you just saw. And then I'm going to show you something really cool um, using LinkedIn. Thanks, David. 
Cool. Thanks, Megan. David, I've, I've seen your hand, so please feel free to 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 add a question. Uh, we will be happy to answer. So any questions that you guys have, feel free to, to cast them into a Q&A box uh, and we're, we're going to slowly answer them one by one. Appreciate and I it. Also, yeah, th also, yeah, I would tell you, I, I knew I was going to get that question. I think it's from you, Jim. Uh, question is about the breadth of the database. So there's about approaching 40 million records that's being updated. It's being grown. I, I would encourage you to reach out to Vet and his team. I, obviously, I don't sell it. I can tell you with a very segmented market that we are in, training managers, chief learning officers, which is not a really mainstream market, we have had no little or no issue. Um, so you have to work with them and they can help you do some of those searches. Cool. 100%, yeah. So the other thing that I wanna show you is how many of you by a yes or no have seen a tool called Octopus? Give me a quick yes or no. So let me see here. Okay, cool. So what I'm about to show you, I'm not gonna show you the full blown demo. So what I do every day is if you notice I have campaigns up here. So if I wanna connect to people, I have campaigns for training managers, coaches, Midwest sales leaders. So we do a lot of things in our coaching field. Here is the coolest thing. So let's say I wanna connect to some more training managers. I've got some people here, you see the list. I populated this by just doing a link with LinkedIn. I'm not gonna show you that now, I wanna show you the cool stuff. I have a pre-built message to what? To a webcast I'm doing. I'm getting people right to my thought leadership. Now I usually do about 75 a day. So at the end of every month, I'm sending out personalized about 2,200 message on messages to second or third level connections. So watch what happens. I'm just gonna choose three people. I click launch. I can do this with 30, 40 people at a time. Guess what's happening right now? And you'll see it. It's being processed. It's sending that message to the people, the next three people on the list. So every day, I got emails going out from AutoClose. I got emails going out from Octopus. And I'm connecting with people and I'm building up my what? My audience and my subject matter expertise. And so what's happening is, is I'll get people to connect with me. And once they connect with me, I can send them a message, which works the same way, which I'll show you here in a second. But those three people have now just been asked to connect with me and asked to join a free webcast that I'm doing. Now that works for us. You can certainly try your own messaging and your own cadence. The coolest thing about this, to populate this takes seconds. To send out 75 messages a day on LinkedIn, without hiring someone to type and copy and cut and paste is less than two minutes a day. So on any given day, I'm getting in front of 1,000 to 2,000 people. With LinkedIn, I'm getting in touch with people on a very small um, segmented basis. Now let's say we've connected with people. They come into messages. I come from connect. Now I wanna message the training managers that have connected with me. It works the exact same way, it's a different message. This for me, everybody, will blow you away. The cost in this is about 25 bucks a month. I'm not gonna get into auto closes cost. I will tell you as a small company, it has been more than worth it. And when you look at it on a monthly basis, it is a no brainer. Again, this is a best practice. I'm not selling anything. So what we do is we have auto close working at any given time. The second thing that we have is every single day, I'm contacting 50 to 80 people on LinkedIn for connections and then messages. Once you do that, you start building up your network, you build up your audience. If you're using thought leadership, they start to follow and they start to engage with you more. The day of the traditional cold call is still somewhat there, but we've got to get behind their walls. How do we get behind their walls? By offering something of value. So one word response, impressions. Let me know if you haven't seen anything like this. Yeah, it is, thanks David. This for me has completely automated our business. So think about what we've accomplished in sight of what? 18 minutes. Auto close is always marketing for you. Targeting, great database. I connect with second level connections. Who am I connecting with? Training managers, chief learning officers, human resources. 
I'm connecting with them via LinkedIn. So I've now, on any given day, I'm connecting with two to 400 people on a day, daily basis. My time commitment is probably about a minute. That's the difference of what we're doing. So as we come back, I go back to the following. Everything is changing. We have to lead with expertise. The salesperson is now starting to gravitate to being more of a strategist. We have to have product knowledge, the ability to teach, the ability to demo, the ability to connect. How do you do that? You lead with subject matter expertise. For us, it's been webcasts. Do we do white papers and podcasting? Sure. But keep that in mind. Please do not think that this type of work is only for the marketing department. It is the hugest mistake I see companies make. We have to connect on a one-by-one -one basis. So I share this with all of you. Bear uh, Crop Sciences, the old Monsanto. I want you to think about this for a second. Years ago, their number one objective was all about relationships. Here's the problem. They're now getting in front of their customers. Guess what's happening? Their first objection is price. They don't want to talk about family anymore. Why? Because I already know about you and your competitors from the internet. So the agricultural world and the way they sell is completely turned upside down. Five years ago, working with them, I don't need to do LinkedIn. I know my customers. That's changing. Number two, the Milwaukee Brewers, their sales brand. One of the things that they do that I think is brilliant, when they get to know business owners or people that they do business with, they go out and do the very searches that I just showed you on LinkedIn and they will connect people using LinkedIn and they'll bring people together instead of selling them, that's their sales brand. So what's happening everybody is, I'm sure all of you, especially with the pandemic crisis, the way we sell, the way we interact is completely changing. So when you think about what we've accomplished inside of 19 minutes, We've got an email marketing campaign going. We've got a LinkedIn marketing campaign going. You have now differentiated yourself and you've put some things on autopilot. So let me come back and let me show you the third one, bomb bomb video. So what I did before today's webcast. Oh, thanks, David. Uh, David, I'm going to touch on that. Hey, David, you should never put a comment in with a guy with ADD lead in the webcast. <laughs> the lack of span. I do make it personal. I tell people my webcasts are 100% educational. We do no selling in our webcasts. And I love that David said that the lack of spam in your note is a winner. It is. You want to make it fun and personal. So thank you for doing that or mentioning that. So here's the other thing that I do. What I did is I'm going to come over here and show you something very, very cool. I'm going to send a video, and he actually knows it's coming because it's kind of a bogus video. This is a video that I just shot using Bomb Bomb Video. I'm going to show you their Chrome extension, and then I'm going to show you something that'll blow you away in your email. So when I copy the link, and I'm going to show you a demonstration of this in a second, I just sent Chris a video. Watch how it populates in his messaging area. It shows up as a video. So this is a Chrome extension. So when I come up to BombBomb, now I don't think this will let me shoot video now because my camera's being taken, but we'll, we'll see if it works. I'm sure it won't let me, yeah, because we're already shooting video via um, Zoom. By just clicking that button, I can shoot a video, copy the link, and I can send a personal message into people right inside of LinkedIn. My open rate here is approaching 70 to 80%. I do three of these every single day. They take me about three to five minutes. I send it just via LinkedIn. So the three a day is just in LinkedIn. Takes me about six to seven minutes. What I will ask for is I will ask for them to click on a button to schedule some time with me. And some do, some don't. Now, let me also show you how I use it in email. So when I compose an email, and I think I have you saved in here, Ben. I'm not sure if I do, I don't. So I'll send one to Sean, he'll probably wonder what the heck we're doing. So this is how it works with your Gmail. 
So I can shoot the video right here. Now, again, it's probably not going to let me because we're shooting video via Zoom because the camera's being taken. So let's just assume that we do that video. You can also look for videos. And if you have some pre-built videos, so I'm going to send this to Sean. I can insert this and there's my video. So you can pre-develop video messages about your products or services. You can personalize it and then I can send it to him. He's probably gonna wonder what the heck I'm doing, but I can now send it to him. Let me show you something very cool from a sales standpoint. Over here to the right, you see that I just sent it to Sean. So when it shows up in orange, it means the email was opened. When it shows up in green, it means that somebody clicked on the video. Now I know my message has been seen and heard. This tool, very inexpensive, I will tell you, much like AutoClose, their support is fantastic. So what I do is I use AutoClose for my mass, but very personalized, very targeted. I use LinkedIn with Octopus, about 30 to 75 a day, depending on the day. It takes me about a minute or two. And then I'll do bomb bomb videos. I can do mass bomb bomb videos to a list, but my advice is if you can do it personally, you can do it inside of LinkedIn, again, by clicking on their Chrome extension, which pops open. Very easy to do. I can also do it right within the Gmail or Outlook. And so by doing that, I can also have videos um, that are pre-built. I can shoot the video by hitting this inner circle. And so what I've done on a regular basis is I have an email marketing campaign going, then I have a targeted LinkedIn campaign going, and then I'm using a video email tool. Now remember in AutoClose, I'm also using Vidyard. So Vidyard's the tool of their choice and that's what's embedded, works just as easy as bomb, bomb video. I am now personalizing my messaging and getting people to my subject matter expertise. So we're only at 27 minutes past the hour. I am an advertisement for a jar of Ritalin. I fully am aware of that. Give an impression of what you've learned so far. Give me one quick impression. By the way. Oh. Uh, yes, you Jim, can. Uh, sorry, David. Yes, you can preview the video before sending. There is a way to do it. Sorry, Ved, I apologize. No, don't worry about it. hundred uh, percent. This is like, this has been super, super valuable. Um, and, and, you know, I think a modern salesperson, you don't, you know, necessarily have to have only the, 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 you know, uh, the intellect, intellect, right? emotional intelligence, but you also have the technical capacity and technical intelligence. And I think that's what Tim is, is kind of really um, showing you guys here. I think that's the modern salesperson that we're, that we're kind of walking towards. Um, and, and one thing, you know, that, that relates to personalization. Um, you see, like I have my business development reps and sales development reps, SDRs, BDRs doing, you know, sales outreach and really personalizing emails, personalizing LinkedIn outreach and all that. But what I do and what I like personalizing is actually the ideal customer profile. So I really personalize uh, the target group that I'm going to go after. And then my content is not even that personalized as, you know, it's not personalized as much. I usually do first name and, and some other personalization around it, but that's about it. So if like, it doesn't work if you don't want to personalize the target group, if you just want to blast and shoot people. Like that's irresponsible, right? Which is which is what I keep seeing. So a lot of people are like, oh, I'm you know, blasting people and I'm getting any response. Like, well, there's a reason for it. You either don't have a call to action in your email or you're just spamming people, you know, with no relevance. So those are the important things that Tim was talking about that I I, I totally agree. Um, so so yeah, hundred percent. Well, and I would share with everybody, when we did our onboarding with AutoClose, I spent some time with Adrian, who is one of their members. Um, one of the things that I would tell you that was very valuable is doing the call to action. What's your messaging? Who's your target? They'll spend some time with you doing that. Um, yeah, so let me answer a couple questions. Tony, great questions. The customers are manufacturing. I have manufacturing clients. Um, video emails, here's the funny thing. And so if you remember, and I'll go back to the slide, so I apologize, but Tony asked a great question. So sometimes I'll use auto close without video, but then I might target the same list with bomb bomb videos and see which one works better. So manufacturing can be a little bit old school. So I hope that helps you, but sometimes I'll double up on my messaging. Number two, um, issues with emails getting bucked. You're always going to have that issue. But the thing with auto close, 
that they do a great job of is they get around that with some of the whitelisting strategies, that's for them to talk about. I haven't had that issue, but you're always going to have issues. I would even tell you I've had my own Gmail without using auto close or bomb bomb get blocked because people's spam filters have changed. So that's just kind of the nature of the beast, but that's why you want to have a multi-tiered strategy. Any thoughts, Fed? A hundred percent. I don't want to get too technical, but uh, there, there are a couple of things. So a couple of things that can be done on your end. There are a couple of things that are done on, on our product's end, right? So so uh, what you can do is is talk to your tech team or, or find a support, or I can send you articles. You know, you, you just have to set up three records with your domain name, um, um, with your DNS, right? So, and they're called the the SPF, DKIM and DMARC records. I'm going to type that in so I don't confuse you. So, so that, that is super important if you're sending emails of any kind from a business domain, because that proves that you're a real person and that you're a real business and, you know, that you're not just some random spammer. So that's super important. And I'm going to show you like which tools to use that are free to get tested uh, for your emails and whether you have that installed or not, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one thing. The other thing is you want to make sure uh, that, you know, your subject line is inviting. It's not a clickbait subject line. You gotta have a proper signature with your address, with a you know real name, uh, real phone number, and all that. So that's all by the can spam law, right? Uh, and then there's a third thing. Some people put the unsubscribe link. Now, personally, you can put inside articles. You can put the unsubscribe link, but I don't do it. Uh, because this is a personalized email that you're sending on a one-to-one -one basis. So AutoClose does that for you, but it's sent on one-to-one -one basis. Um, and and so if someone says, please unsubscribe me, this is actually not relevant to me, Tim, please remove me from the list, et cetera, et cetera, the system will put them to a do not email list. You'll never ever be able to email that person again from AutoClose. So that's really useful, but you can still put the text. If you don't wanna hear from me again, please, you know, reply back on subscribe because these are not marketing emails. These are sales emails like you, like I would text Tim or Tim would text me, right? So that's really important. That's the, the main difference between sales email and marketing email, right? Um, and so what AutoClose does, like one last thing, Tim, like I, I could go on and on about this. Uh, so we have, um, we, have, we have a system in place that randomizes the sending speed. So let's say that, you know, you send the first email goes out, then we wait 15 seconds. Then the, 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 you know, the second email goes out, we wait three minutes. Et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it, that, that's, that's one side of it. And of, of course we have a native partnership with both Google and Microsoft. And, and so, so you guys should be, should be uh, good to go. Yeah. And the same thing, it's funny that you say that because that's what Octopus does. They time out their messages to right. almost kind of impose that human factor. And so right. what I would share with you, and I love the questions that have been asked is if you're looking at the screen right now, what I'm looking for, and, and I do more than this, but I have three messaging systems. I first use AutoClose, I set it up quarterly, it takes me two hours. But while I'm doing this webcast, I'm marketing my company. I'm getting registrations for my webcast. Number two, every morning I start out and I send out my 50 to 80 Octopus LinkedIn messages. Then every morning when I get to the office where I have lights here and I will actually shoot two to three bomb bomb videos and I will target and say, you know, hi Tony, it's Tim Hagen. Uh, saw that you were doing XYZ. Our company does ABC. Was wondering if you'd be open to a chat. There's a link below this video. And that's what I do in my video. It's 30 to 45 seconds. Here's the really cool thing about BombBomb. When you see that frozen video, I'm going to show you something here. I will actually hold up a whiteboard with a message on it saying, I've got an idea for you. Guess what happens? I always get a comment. Wow, that's really clever. We have to differentiate ourselves, people. We can't do the same old, same old. It's getting so crowded. So while we're all virtualized now, right? Everybody's going to be doing something with messaging and something with different tools. So what I try to do is for the middle part, get into a webcast. That's our place where our subject matter expertise is demonstrated. Do I use podcasting? Do I use uh, public speaking? Um, do I do conference calls? Sure. But our, for us, our main place is that webcast. And then we, at the webcast, I don't follow up with everybody. That's my personal preference. I will give people a link. I will give people a link to schedule on my calendar. As dumb as that sounds, and a lot of you are probably doing it, this three-step system has actually helped us grow our business even during this crisis. So again, I go back to, you're a strategist. What is your subject matter expertise? 
Think about how you're going to change. What is the sales brand? Think about how you want people to remember you. And I go back to personalization and, and, and Ved just talked about it. This is a screenshot of something from BombBomb. They literally use these boards and I have one. I use it all the time. You notice it says play 50 second video. You can send that to your Outlook, your Google, or you can put it with their Chrome right inside of LinkedIn. And so the cool thing is, now this might sound like, well, geez, it sounds like you should go with BombBomb. You can do the same thing, the same thing with, with auto close because they use Vidyard. I can hold up a thing saying, I get an idea for you. And that's what we do. So the more we personalize, the more we're going to get through the clutter. And, and, and everybody, we know it, right? There's a ton of clutter out there. And so by having that system of auto close, you know, Octopus and Bomb Bomb Video, I'm getting appointments, I'm getting people to register, and we're getting ahead of the competition. Now, I'm going to share something with you. Um, this is not a pot shot. I'm in sales, Fed's in sales. All of us, this is really going to expedi really create different opportunities, I think, for all of us. And um, yeah, uh, there's a question for you there of that, if you could just look at that and maybe answer it from Luca. Um, the virtual world is speeding up the way we sell. By doing this, we're not getting in our cars. We're having more time to connect. And the thing that I forgot to say in the beginning, by using AutoClose, by using Octopus, by using Bomb Bomb Video, it's allowing me, which I never used to do as an entrepreneur, would never allow me to spend the time to do these one-to-one -one conversations. So what's happening is it's really helping us and it's helping us really achieve a lot more intimacy with our prospects and spending time and not feeling as rushed. I would say the biggest mistake that every salesperson makes, and I say this with great respect, is the biggest mistake everybody makes, I think, is we think of ourselves as just salespeople. I hope I don't offend anybody. We love the term strategist. So let me tell you a story. I have a client uh, by the name of the Howard Company. And the Howard Company, we have now trained all the sales reps to do podcasts and webinars. When the downturn hit, they sell to restaurants. Think about their market. Decimated. They're actually hitting their numbers. Really good company. Great company. Great people. And what they're finding now, you can imagine going to sales reps saying, you're going to do marketing. You're going to do thought leadership. The problem between marketing and sales has always been there. When sales are up, the salespeople take credit. When sales are down, what do we always say? We need better marketing. Those two worlds have really been combined now. Every one of us as a sales professional is a personal marketing en engine. So I, right before I got on this webcast, I got an email from a CEO of a credit union out in California. And he said, I've got two situations. I need a couple activities. Give me a call next week. I responded with bomb bomb video. He said, how do you do that so quick? So well, one, it's my content. I better know what I'm doing. But two, he got a personalized message from me talking to Randy, the CEO of this credit union. That's my personal brand. I send them on weekends, evenings. That's just something I choose to do. The reason being is I always want people after they hear a message from me, or a response time for me to say, wow. Now, traditional selling, features, benefits, price, price negotiation, we're never going to differentiate ourselves. The way we open the door is also the way we close the door. So let me share with you why. So I mentioned Adrian from, from AutoClose. I shared with him, and this is part of their onboarding strategy. I don't message very well. I've actually had to tell courses, take courses on messaging. I tend to be, which I'm sure will not shock you in the short time you've heard me, I'm a very verbal communicator. I don't like to write. That's why I love video email. And he spent some time showing me some strategies and some formulas for messaging. And our email click rate really went up because of it. And so to make the assumption that everything that comes out of our mouth is going to be the gospel, it's not. But when we're leading and we're solving problems and we're teaching, most salespeople don't think of themselves that way. 
Now, before I, I brought up the logo for Bear Science, they have, their experts are called agronomists. They're the science people in uh, plant uh, technology, literally. And they would have all these um, successful interactions with our, with our growers, our farmers, our customers, and why? They were the subject matter expertise that the farmers were looking for. Not that we don't have it as salespeople, but that inherently gives us the advantage that we're looking for that if you can answer questions, if you can teach, if you can have Q&A, most salespeople think they can. Where I think there's an opportunity and why the virtual world presents us a huge opportunity is to watch our recordings, to have someone review us, pair up with a peer. If you're a manager or coach, make sure you're really reviewing those things because you're gonna find opportunities where people are exhibiting tremendous strengths, yet also where they have opportunities to improve. So I've actually had clients who have gone from the sales world in person to the virtual world, call me up and saying, we're hitting our numbers and I'm listening to our people. I don't even think they know what our products do. The point being, just because numbers are up doesn't mean people are selling as effectively as they could. The opportunity to sell during this new age and crisis, we have to reinvent ourselves. So present company included, we've had to really reinvent ourselves and look for new and different ways. Because in my business, everybody's uncle, third stepmother, pet dog, everybody's now a coach. So it's gotten really crowded. How do I get through that? I've got to be creative. So before we leave it open for some questions, give me one to two words to describe the, um, the webcast up to this point. Just one or two words. Okay, cool. Superb. Megan says informative. And we have David who says really worth the time and energy. That's nice. Aren't you happy it's being recorded, David? I go fast, don't I? But this is for me, the thing I love about doing webcasts like this is, I, I'm not, <laughs> this isn't on me. <laughs> Thanks. This is good. Good. So let me just show you my model. Oh, thanks, Don. <clears throat> I set up my residual marketing campaign every 90 days. I focus on two tools. I certainly can use more. So I podcast every day as well. But I use AutoClose and Octopus. Then I do target messaging three times a day. I use BombBomb, and I will also use, if you haven't done it, Use the mobile device or the mobile app of LinkedIn and send an audio message. Most people don't know that you can do that. So someone gets an audio icon and all of a sudden it's a message with me talking to them. That's how you get through the clutter. Everybody's sending text messages and helping you, right? So again, you've gotta be creative. Then what I do is I do two webcasts every month. They are subject matter expertise delivered. They exemplify what a strategist does. Now. That knows I do this. I start off every one of my webcasts with Irish music. It's loud, it's obnoxious. You've gotta be different. Some people may not like it. I think that we as salespeople have gotta get through the clutter. And we can't assume just because we have a great product, that's enough anymore. So we've gotta be very creative in doing that. And then the last thing is I'll use BombBomb Bomb Video and I will use that as a follow-up. And I will always do those things in a way that, um, you know, when I do my follow-up, I'll send a message. I will always do it. I'm going to give you a really cool trick here. I will write down timestamps in a webcast. I will ask people, what's a challenge you're currently having with coaching related to my business? When people put that in from, let's say, 110 to 120, I go back to that chat and I highlight. And you know what I do? I send them a bomb bomb video. So I'll export out the chat in a webcast. Now I'm speaking directly to a challenge, I'm not selling anything. Then I'll say, if you're interested in continuing the conversation, right below this video in BombBomb, you can schedule time on my calendar. That's the model that I use everybody. Anything to add that? 
No, I think I think video video has been amazing. Uh, and there there's a, there's one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna try and be technical here, Tim. Um, <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's one thing, guys, to 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 kind of know about, and and that is like if you if you're sending the first cold email out, so you don't have that reputation, you don't have that credibility. Uh, don't start with a video uh, because it can sometimes go to spam. Not always, sometimes. So just have that in mind, and and you know, A/B test it, right? Okay. Uh, but second email, third email, it's always a video. Like and 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 guys, where do you read your emails? Where do you consume your emails? On a mobile phone, most of the time. So why do we keep writing, you know, those long blog posts like a thousand words uh, emails? Who's going to read that? You know, like uh, the, the way you can test it for yourself is just text yourself on a mobile phone, send a test to yourself and see if you can scroll it with one thumb scroll. And if you can, that's my kind of number one tip in order, you know, to get, the, get a good engagement. And if you haven't built the reputation and this is the first time you're, you're messaging that person, you know, try and be like, you know, try and ask yes, no questions. Like try to get that engagement early on because you're inviting person to play tennis. Don't spam them with balls, go back and forth, back and forth. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to warm them up. Uh, and so what Tim is doing like really, really well, I just absolutely love his strategy is if you're seeing, he's not using just one channel. He's using video, email, LinkedIn, all these different channels and, and mediums he's using and applying uh, to his uh, outreach strategy. And I think that's exactly what's going to work because, you know, everything in marketing and sales, it's a bell curve. So when you, when you start doing it, when you start doing the long form post, when you start doing short messages or start doing videos, no one's doing it. So you have the edge and then all of a sudden everyone starts doing it. And then sooner than later, you know, you end up at the, at the other end extreme or of the bell curve. And this is exactly where it becomes a spam. So you want to change the channel. You want to change the approach and change how you do things. And so what I really like about the Tim and his approach is how uh, diverse he is in his approach and, and his strategies. But there's always the same value, same values that, that, you know, who Tim intrinsically is in his business. He's trying to convey that using video, email, LinkedIn, you name it. It's him. It's always going to be Tim. And that's what people love and what they can relate to. Well, and I, and I would even take David's question, and, and it's a great one, because are you interviewing people on the webcast or just chatting? So I do both. I actually, on my podcast, will interview people, and that's something that Sean does. And so what I will do, which is something that, if you think about an expert in your industry, start a podcast, which can be a webcast, you can do it on Zoom, you know, the, the terms are interchangeable, and then you do the interview. So I did one with a gal by the name of Cassandra Worthy, and she's a an expert in change enthusiasm. We do not compete. We're friends. We took some training together and I had about 180 people sign up for the webcast, but about two or three of those people found out what our company did. I was very careful not to prospect too much because it was kind of her show, but you can interview people and see, and I love what Ved just said, you know, the messaging, don't start with video because you could go into spam. But one thing I encourage all of you, I did a free workshop series and I played music. People would show up 30 minutes early for the music. Now, that may not be your style, but what's gonna separate you? If it's just going to be chatting, much to your point, David, give them something to remember. Now, this is probably gonna be hard to believe, and Ved and Sean and the AutoCools people have seen me in action. I'm very calm right now. <laughs> I, I'm a guest on their show. Not that you should be obnoxious or loud, but what's gonna differentiate you? Whether it's giving away a book or something, it just, you want somebody to walk away saying, wow, that was, that was different. Because this, what we're doing right now with you guys, is very commoditized. Hopefully by seeing a live demonstration of tools from someone who's a practitioner and not an expert trying to sell you his coaching services gives you a point of differentiation. And AutoClose deserves that credit because they're the ones who invited me to do this because they wanted a practitioner of their platform, but also a practitioner of other platforms. So did that answer your question, David? Let me know. So I would give everybody just a quick um, summarization. Residual marketing. Email, video, LinkedIn, if you're B2B especially. Number two, that message. What problem are you solving? And if you can make that event memorable, 
my free webcast series had 472 companies registered. I am okay. still talking to all of a lot of those companies, not all of them. I don't want to mislead you. But what's different is if you give people and you're solving a problem right. and you leave them wanting more, you're going to be in good shape. That a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think, I think one point that you mentioned earlier is um, you talked about brand, right? And you talked about how individuals should, uh, you know, work on their own brand and, and, you know, now marketing and, and sales is all meshed up. Yep. Like, and I think that, that, you know, that's so, so true. Uh, and I keep seeing it across different industries, you know, and people are saying, you know, I'm not in tech, that's for you guys, that's reserved for you. Not really. Um, you know, when, when let's say you're a salesperson, you're reaching out to a company, the first brand that they're going to see is you. So you're representing your company. And this is nothing new. It's been like that for, for, for years. Um, and, but I think now more than ever, it's important that you nurture your own brand. And, and, and even better than that, Tim, I know that you're a big fan of, of you know, having fun while doing work. Um, so I think that that's extremely important because um, that's how, you know, you can build your brand. That's how you can work on your hobbies and, and, and mesh them into a business. It's just the opportunities are endless. Uh, and and you just like now more than ever, we have these opportunities to get into a boardroom via Zoom, to, to get connected to a colleague via, via you know, Zoom or, or any chat uh, messenger out there. So it's not all, you know, negative actually there's a lot of positives and i'd like you tim to, to talk a bit more about that before we before we end the session yeah i think that the, inherently everything presents an opportunity i think change is a good thing i don't think we want a pandemic crisis to facilitate it but i do think that everything that's going on um what we decided to do come march 1st knowing the crisis was here is we took march and april and we did no selling we did all free training i helped seven companies go online um, some customers, some non-customers, won an event company that did only in-person events. Think about their business. The owner went on vacation, came back nine days later, her company was gone. They're now break even and they're doing well. It's a great company out of Bethesda, Maryland called uh, Concero that does a lot of really cool events with chief learning officers, HR people. But I mean, we spent days together and they, they had to reinvent themselves. They're now saying, wow, this is really cool. We didn't even know this world existed. And so I, I think that during these times, we have to find a way to give to our industries and our communities, as corny as that sounds, but I literally would not sell anything for 60 straight days because I didn't want to be that guy. Now I'm in a position I can do that, but I think when you look at what AutoClose was doing when salespeople got unemployed, they ran a campaign. Let us help you get employed. We'll do a database search and help you start an email campaign. I thought that was one of the most creative things that you guys came up with. That's what I think we need to do during this crisis. A hundred percent. And, you know, I, I believe that, you know, this, this will end eventually. And, uh, and so as will everything else. So it's important to, to understand that and to have that type of a mindset. So what we did, we, we started like a two month uh, coaching session. So every yep. Wednesday, Thursday, we would spend, uh, you know, like uh, I would do back to back coaching with businesses and business owners and then, you know, just try and come up with creative ways to, to, you know, uh, get back on their feet um, and kind of help them help them achieve that. And and the other thing, as as uh, Stim's mentioning, you know, we we kind of started giving away our software for free, basically, and giving them some data to reach out to recruiters and and try and get get hired. So so yeah, there's there's a lot of things that you can do, and and it's always like like you do Tim in coaching. It always comes down to you know what can I do for someone else instead of if you if you stress too much about yourself, um, you're gonna just you know get yourself anxious. But if you actually try and serve and try and be there for people and customers. And, and that's, that's, I mean, that's the most noble thing that you can do now. Um, so, so th this was, this was absolutely awesome, Tim. Yeah. So guys, I'd just like to, to open up the floor for you to, to ask like final questions because we're, we're running at the top of the hour. Uh, so feel free to ask any questions, Tim or, Tim or I, uh, and we'd be happy to, to answer. And I'll put in my email address and not yes. for my services, but anything you want to talk about with sales or the things that we're doing, yeah. this is not our space. I'd be happy to help. 100%. And we're going to follow up with you guys. Uh, we're going to send you the, the slides, Tim, right? And, yeah. and the recording. So you're going to get that. Uh, and uh, any last minute questions? Yeah, just give us a yes or a Y or an N. Right. Thumbs up works as well. <laughs> Tim, this was this was really this has been great exactly as megan is saying i completely agree I'm, i might be biased but i love this i enjoyed it 
uh, and yeah. I hope you guys did too. Uh, we're gonna definitely do it again, some some point in the future. Uh, once uh, once Tim figures out like some new strategies and tips and tricks to share with us, um, stay stay well, take care, social distance, and uh, and uh, let's uh, let's 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 all have a great week. <laughs>